very good morning to you dear students welcome back to our online lecture on monday dear students as you must have got a notice on your virtual ed app your unit test exams are postponed you will very soon get your unit test dates dear students because of that we will start now further of our chapter measurement of matter revision video already for two chapters i have uploaded you can revise your chapters again for chapter number 1 and chapter number 2 now in this video today we are going to learn where we have stopped measurement of matter first we will learn about what are the different types of electronic configuration of different 10 elements which on board i am going to explain you all what is electronic configuration how are the shell forms further we are going to study about two different laws where we are going to law, uh, learn about the law of proportionality of matter as well as we are going to learn few molecular formulas in this video we are going to learn very important things dear students the first 10 elements you are supposed to write in your notebook as well as you have to write today's molecular formula also in your notebook neatly let's begin with our video on our board post theory he said that in an atom if the outermost orbit is having eight electron then the given element is stable now according to k shell l shell and m shell in k shell there should be only two electrons and l shell there should be at least eight electrons and then we continue so if we take the electronic configuration of of helium okay if we take the electronic configuration of helium then helium has two electron in its outermost orbit helium has two electron in its outermost orbit so that's why it is considered as what stable element so these type of elements are called stable element inner gases or also we call them as a zero group elements another we can take as neon okay neon in the first k shell we have always two electrons so we have taken two and 10 minus 2 is remaining how much 8 so 8 electron comes in the next shell okay k shell and the l shell so 8 electrons are there in the outermost orbit of neon so therefore neon is also considered as a stable group element or we can say uh, zero group element or we can uh, inert gases also now how do we write their structure like for for an example if i want to write down the structure of neon if i want to draw the structure of neon then i know its electronic configuration is 2 and 8 so how to write its structure the first shell will have only two electrons over here okay always the k shell has the two electrons okay now here we have its uh, atomic number as 10 and atomic mass number as 20 then the next shell will consist of how many electrons here there are eight electrons in the outermost orbits that's why it is considered as a what stable element so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 okay so in this way this is the actual structure of neon the same way we can make a structure for helium also like for an example helium has its atomic number as 2 so k shell has two electrons so if i write helium as what is its atomic number 2 and atomic mass number as 4 so it has only two electrons in its outermost orbit and it is stable so this is the structure for helium got it dear students in this way we can remember all its atomic number as well as we can remember their electronic configuration also so i am giving you all first 10 elements electronic configuration also so that in this break time you can just go through first 10 elements i am not giving you all 118 elements because that is not required if you know the first 10 to 12 20 elements also it's done for this chapter okay and it is very important you should know the atomic number and atomic mass number then only further you will know about the valency okay and the concept of molecular formula how to find out the molecular formula which is the very important concept in this particular chapter so this is the base for so now we are going to write down the electronic configuration of all these elements which are the 10 elements 
First we will write the atomic number again. I am writing down the atomic number. As hydrogen atomic number is 1. Helium is 2. Lithium is 3. Beryllium is 4. Boron is 5. Carbon is 6. Nitrogen is 7. Oxygen is 8. Fluorine is 9. And neon is 10. So let us write their electronic configuration. So EC of electronic configuration for first one is 1 as it is. The second one will be 2. Then the third one will become 2 and 1. 2 here. In the case here, there should be only 2 electrons, not more than 2. If there are extra electrons, then it moves to the next shell. Then we have here 2 and 2. Then the next one becomes 2 and 3. Then 6 electrons. So this one becomes as 2 and 4. Then we have 2 and 5. Then we have 2 and 6. Then 2 and 7. And that's why neon is considered as 2 and 8. Neon has electronic configuration 2 and 8. Again I am repeating. If in the outermost orbit there are 8 electrons. Then it is considered to be a stable element. Got it dear students? So in this way, the name, the symbols you know, then the atomic number and its electronic configuration. Now the electronic configuration is very very important because of the electronic configuration itself. We will in future come to know what is the valency of this particular element. So dear students, in this break time, please go through this first. What is this way considered? Okay, all these things we are going to study. Now, one more thing which we are going to study is here that the, the uh, ratio, the ratio or we can say the proportion of different objects is always the same. Uh, the ratio never changes. Got it? In nature, God has given us writings of things and we cannot play along with the nature. Like for an example, if I say you, the molecular formula of water is H2O. So, it is very clearly understood that the molecule H2O means what? Here, the hydrogen molecule is going to be only two molecules of hydrogen. And oxygen molecule is going to be only one molecule of an oxygen. It cannot interchange, okay? The, uh, one day, hydro hydrogen comes and says to oxygen, Hey, oxygen, I am very bored now. Every time, why should I only give my two, uh, two electrons? This time I am not going to give my two electrons. You give two electrons and I will give one electron. That is not possible, dear students. Okay, it cannot happen like that. It is made by the nature. It is God who has made all these things. in a, Like it is created in such a way that the elements are going to be the same. The molecular formula, the chemical formula is going to be, remain the same. The ratio is going to be the same because it is in that form. Chemically, it is in that form. That's why there will be two hydrogen atom and one oxygen atom. So all those things we are going to uh, relate with our chapter along with different laws. So let us first start with the first law which is by law of chemical combination. Now you know the word combination means what? When we combine two different things, it is called as combination. Now we have already studied about elements, we have studied about molecules and we have studied about uh, chemical molecules, the mixture, everything. Now what is mixture? Mixture is what? When different elements are mixed together, okay, they are called as a mixture. But there are certain compounds. What are compounds? When one or two elements are combined together, they form a compound. And here we are going to concentrate more on different types of compounds. Now, actually, what is combination? What is combination? Combination or combining. Okay. Combination here means when one element is combining with another element and they form a combination. Like for an example, I can say here this is a combination. Hydrogen and oxygen is a combination. Okay. Where hydrogen and oxygen are combining together. That is called as a combination. So here, law of chemical combination. A combination of a substance changes during a chemical change. Okay. It is said that the chemical, during there is a lot of chemical changes, maybe the composition of them can change. 
So let us first go through our first paragraph. Open your textbooks, take your pencils in your hand and mark the important points in the first paragraph. Now, dear students, while reaching the chapter, I will be keep saying y'all, what are the things which are being cancelled according to the 25% of the syllabus. Okay, so you please take your pencils in your hand and keep making a marking if you have not done previously. So, can you recall is fully cancelled, which is based on the previous knowledge which we have already learned in standard A. But still, I would request y'all to just go through it. And what is compound form, what are molecular weight and molecular formula that everything just now I explained here. Still, there are certain molecular formulas which today in this lecture itself I am going to give you. So in the previous standard, we have learned that compounds are formed by chemical combination of elements. As I spoke just now, and I said y'all that the elements are made due to chemical combination when they combine together chemically. We have all also learned that an important principle of Delton's atomic theory is that molecules of a compound are formed by joining atoms of different elements. So atoms are of a different element. As I said here, one element is not there. There are different elements which combine together and form a compound. Law of chemical combination. As I said here, that as the chemical, uh, as the compounds are, uh, are are combined together, they may change their chemical characteristics. Okay, there are different forms of characteristics. There are physical characteristics and chemical characteristics. Like for an example, we can say like sodium chloride. Okay, which is also called as a table salt. Now what happens? If sodium is alone, its chemical property is different and chlorine's chemical property is different. But when they combine together, we are consuming it. Okay, when we are consuming it, it becomes, the chemical property becomes different. Got it? So, we can uh, consider this as an example. So, here, yeah, the composition of a substance changes during a chemical change. The fundamental experiment is this regard we performed by the scientists in 18th and 19th century. While doing this, they measured accurately the substances used and formed. The scientists Delton, Thompson and Rutherford studied the structure of the substances and the atoms and thus discovered the law of chemical combination. As I said y'all, there are different structures, okay? And this structure mainly says, according to Niel Bohr's theory, that the outermost orbit should have how many electrons? There should be 8 electrons in their outermost orbits. If there are 8 electrons in the outermost orbit, then the element is said to be stable. Otherwise, it creates a valency. It needs valency. Okay? And then, if they go in the search of other elements and they combine and then they become stable. So, chemical combination is mainly depending on the outermost orbit, which is called the structure of an atom. Further, Scientists could then write the molecular formula of various compounds on the basis of Delton atomic theory and the law of chemical combination. Here we shall verify the law of chemical combination by, by means of knowing the molecular formula. So in this today's video, I am going to give you all 20 molecular formulas, okay, and which you should learn it nicely and write it down in your notebook, okay. Uh, after writing what was given in the previous video, okay, before the break, I have asked you all to write down all the things which I have written on the board like uh, atomic number, atomic mass number, electronic configuration and everything and small small definitions also. Now today you are going to write down the molecular formulas. First we should know the molecular formula then only we will understand this chapter more better and uh, uh, very nicely, okay. So now here, try this full activity is cancelled. Okay, so cancel that whole activity. Further, we will move towards our next important law, which is called as a law of conservation of matter. Now we have already learned about conservation of energy, how we should conserve energy. The same way there is a law of conservation of matter also, how we have to conserve, how we have to save matter also. So here it says that a chemical reaction the total weight of a reactant is the same as the total weight of a product formed due to the chemical reaction and this is called as the law of conservation of matter. This says us that the energy or the weight of the matter is never lost. Okay? Reactants and products you know very well. During we do a chemical reaction, okay? 
left hand side and right hand side. The left hand side is the reactant and the right hand side is the product. So what weight will be towards the right hand side, okay, or the left hand side is going to be the same the weight towards the right hand side also. Got it student? So the weight is not going to change here. This only is said by this law which is called as a law of conservation of matter. That whatever is the weight in the reactor's place, after the reaction it is going to be the same during the product's place also. Again we will go through the definition, or oh, sorry law. The, uh, in a chemical reaction, the total weight of a reactant is the same as the total weight of the product formed due to the chemical reaction and this is called as a conservation of matter. Now, we will look forward towards some examples which proves that the law of conservation of matter is there. So now let us move further as we have learnt about law of conservation of matter. Now the next law which we are going to study is law of conservation of proportion. Okay. As I said y'all that whenever we write H2O the molecular formula is H2O only why. Okay. Why it is H2O that also we are going to study and uh, uh, already y'all have studied in standard, uh, standard A that uh, we do the cross uh, crossing of the valency and then the molecular formula is formed. That again we will go, uh, we are going to study in this particular chapter also. So that's why we come to know that there is a uh, hydrogen is two molecules, okay, and oxygen is one molecule. But this two and uh, uh, one will never change, okay. It is going to remain the same because that is its proportion, that is its ratio. The same way their weight, okay, their mass. As I said here, each and every matter has mass as well as it has volume. So that mass and volume is called, uh, is put down into this particular law which is called as a law of conservation of proportion. The proportion is also being conserved. It is never wasted. As in the previous law we saw that the reactant and the product are always what? The same. The reactant, the weight of the reactant is same as that of a product. Here, we are going to see the proportion is always the same, okay. The proportion will never interchange. As I said y'all, that the uh, uh, hydrogen cannot come to oxygen and say that, chalo now let us uh, uh, interchange our proportion. It is not possible, okay. The proportion is going to be the same. So let us see what it is. What does the law says us? The law says here is the proportion by weight. What is the proportion here? The proportion by weight of the constituent. What a constituent here? For an example, hydrogen and oxygen are the two constituents. Element in the various samples of a compound is always the fixed. What it is? It is fixed. Got it? It is never going to be changed. Like for an example, when you go for shopping, there are some shops where it is written fixed rate, no change. Okay? The same way is over here also, it is going to be fixed. It is never going to be changed. Now, again I am explaining you the, uh, the law and then two examples we will go through the law. So here, what does the law say is that the proportion by weight of the constituent element in the various samples of a compound is fixed. Okay? Whatever the constituent elements are there, it is going to be fixed. So, now one by one we will just go through the examples. Like, first, the proportion by weight of hydrogen and oxygen in water is always how much? 1 is to 8. The ratio. We can say the proportion. Okay? Is always how much? 1 is to 8. Now, what does this mean? Means what? 1 is to 8 means, yeah, if there is a 9 grams of water, there will be 1 gram of hydrogen and 8 grams of oxygen. That's why this ratio makes it 1 is to 8. Now, it is never going to be uh, like interchanged that hydrogen goes and says to oxygen, shallow this time you give 1 and I will give 8. It is nothing like that. The ratio is always what? It is fixed. It is never going to be changed. Okay. So what it is? It is always fixed. Next example which we can see here. First example we have seen of what? Water. Okay. Water. 
that the proportion by weight of hydrogen and oxygen in water is always how much? 1 is to 8. Where in 9 grams of water, 1 gram is hydrogen and 8 grams is oxygen. The next example is carbon and oxygen. In carbon dioxide is always ratio 3 is to 8. How much it is? 3 is to 8. That means if there is 44 grams of carbon dioxide. If 44 grams of carbon dioxide is obtained in which how much will be oxygen and how much will be carbon? Therefore, there will be 12 grams of, of carbon. Okay, how much is uh, carbon here? Yeah? 12 grams is carbon and 32 grams is oxygen. Again, I am repeating. Carbon and oxygen in carbon dioxide ratio is always how much? 3 is to 8. Now, this 3 is to 8 explained us like that. That if 44 grams of carbon dioxide is there, then 12 grams of what will be oxygen and 32 grams of, of, uh, of uh, 12 grams of carbon will be there and 32 grams of oxygen will be there, which makes a ratio of 3 is to 8. So, in this way, this com uh, complete uh, uh, constant proportionality law says us that the proportion of the weight in a constituent in any kind of a sample will remain always the fixed. If you take any drop of water, the ratio will always, you will get it as 1 is to 8. You take carbon dioxide, always its ratio is going to be 3 is to 8. Okay? So, in this way, this is called as a law of con uh, conservation, uh, sorry, law of uh, constant of proportionality. Okay? Now, further, there is certain, uh, one a particular, on page number 48, there is one explanation or we can say verification of a constant of proportionality is given. Cancel that whole part. There will be no question asked on that. And actually there is just an explanation. What I have explained just now is given into a theory form in that particular paragraph. So just cancel it out. Okay. Now next dear students in this video I am going to give you a few molecular formulas today. Which you please write it down and as well as this all definitions what are written on the board along with its examples. Please note it down after what you have written from the previous video. Continue after that. Okay. Three uh, important laws I have taught you all today. First was law of uh, conservation of inner uh, matter as well as law of conservation of uh, uh, proportion. Okay. As constant of proportion. Now, the next I am going to write down all the molecular formulas which you have to write it down in your notebook. Okay, dear students. So, let us now first write down all molecular formulas and one one formula I will keep on explaining here. So, now dear students, let us move towards our next important topic which is chemical formulas, okay, or which we, we can write it down as molecular formulas also. Now, this all chemical formulas and molecular formulas are very important related to this chapter because we have to remove moles in further, we have to remove their molecular masses. So, if you don't know their chemical formula, you will not come to know how many elements uh, are there. Like for an example, here are two elements of hydrogen and one element of oxygen is there. So to learn this, everything you should know which, uh, which particular name represent which uh, particular chemical formula or molecular formula. Because further we are going to study numericals based on this and this is the base of important uh, things in this particular chapter. So now today I am giving you only 15. In next video more 15 I will be giving you. This is going to help you all throughout your uh, life in chemistry. Okay. This is the first step or we can say the base of chemistry. If you know, don't know the molecular formulas or molecular uh, weight of a particular element then it becomes very difficult when you are learning further things in, che in chemistry. Like if you are taking science. Okay. Uh, uh, after ten, standard 10. These are the things, these are the uh, small, small bases which are being taught in uh, your lower classes in 9th and 10th standard, which is very much important related with our further studies. So, please, children, go through it, write neatly, and uh, as I am instructing you all, go through like that only. So, the first one is water, where we write H2O. Now, there is a pattern of writing. As I said, you always there should be a capital letter, okay? Always there should be capital letter. Now H, two elements are there. So that two will come over the, the bottom part of the H. Don't write like.
like this, two like this. So this will be considered as wrong. Okay. How you have to write it down is very important while writing the molecular formula also. So K, capital letters with that two is where at towards the bottom of H. Got it? And it should not towards uh, O. Then we will consider two as O. Okay. So this should be written very neatly. Okay, dear student. So this is very very important how we have to write it down. The next one is carbon monoxide, which is CO. Carbon dioxide, CO2. Sulfuric acid, H2SO4. How many elements are there? Hydrogen, sulfur, oxygen. All should be written capital. How many hydrogen atom? Two hydrogen atom, one sulfur atom, and four oxygen atom. This is very important to know when we are removing their molecular mass. Okay. So this note, uh, this particular information is very very important. Next is hydrochloric acid, which is HCl. Okay. What is hydrochloric acid? It is HCl. So it is sulfuric acid, which is H2O. Now one more thing here. All should be written capital. Okay. Next is hydrochloric acid, HCl. Now see here. We write chlorine as C and then small L. So capital C and small L. That should be kept in your mind properly. HCl. Nitric acid HNO3, sodium chloride A NaCl. See A is small, C and then L is small. NaCl. Next is sodium sulfate Na2SO4. See how it is written towards their bottom. Na2SO4. Sodium carbonate Na2CO3. Sodium carbonate carbonate group is CO3. Sodium Carbonate Na2CO3, calcium chloride CaCl2, okay CaCl2. Eleventh one is calcium sulfate CaSO4, CaSO4. Twelfth calcium oxide CaO. Thirteen magnesium chloride MgCl2, MgCl2. See Mg. G is small and then C L two. Next is number fourteen, magnesium sulfate M G S O four. Sulfate group then it comes S O four. Oxide group it comes C O three. So magnesium sulfate M G S O four. The last one is sodium bicarbonate, which you all are going to study in our next chapter, acid, base, and salt. We are going to study the importance of sodium carbonate, sodium bicarbonate, sodium dicarbonate, sodium carbonate. All these things, properties we are going to study. So you should know what is sodium bicarbonate formula. So sodium bicarbonate is what NaHCO3. See how it is written. NaHCO3. Na. Okay. Then H capital C capital O capital and G. Oh sorry, three. So now we, how many elements are here? If we say sodium is one element, hydrogen is one element, carbon is one element, and oxygen is another element which is present. After combining this all four elements, there is a formation of sodium bicarbonate. Okay, which is how much? NaHCO3. Again, I am repeating everything. Please go through it once again so that there is no confusion while writing it down. Okay, dear students. You have to write it down, uh, and in your rough book, practice it for one or two times. The third time you will learn it. Again, water H two O, carbon monoxide C O, carbon dioxide C O two, sulfuric acid H two S O four, hydrochloric acid H C L, nitric acid H N O three, sodium chloride N A C L, sodium sulfate N A two C O S O four, sodium Carbonate, which is number nine. Okay, this is number nine. Sodium carbonate, Na two CO three. Calcium chloride, CaCl two. Calcium sulfate, CaSO four. Calcium oxide, CaO. Magnesium chloride, MgCl two. Magnesium sulfate, MgSO four. Sodium bicarbonate, NaHCO three. So in this video, students, we will stop today over here for this video. In my next video, more fifteen.
elements, uh, molecular formulas I am going to give you.